Mark Kaufman for Whiskey Whistle. Johnny Walker Black versus Johnny Walker Black. 12 year old versus double black. How do these compare and how do they differ? Stay tuned for the Johnny Walker Black Label Whiskey Whistle. Hey y'all, Mark here, the host of Whiskey Whistle, your wise choice in independent whiskey and spirits reviews. Bringing you a very special whiskey review. This is Johnny Walker Black versus Black. Now let's find out how these are different and how they're the same and which one is my favorite. All right, now first of all, where am I? I'm on a family vacation at the Del Pino Golf and Resort in Sokcho at the east coast of Korea. And uh, wanted to do a review. I brought a bunch of bottles. Looks like I'll only do this one, but at least one is better than none. All right, let's get these poured. This is the standard 12 year old. Uh, this is a bottle that I've had for, oh, about, how long? Uh, about eight, six, six or eight months, but it's only been open for about uh, one month. And this was a gift, actually, from Diageo Korea. And it's a very special bottle. This one says Hangawi, which means um, uh, Chuseok, which is the uh, uh, fall festival, harvest festival, harvest moon festival here in, uh, in South Korea, in Korea. All right, let's get that poured into my Glenfiddich Glencairn uh, Glen glass. All right, let's get that poured. Just a touch of each. Anyway, how have you been doing? I wonder which of these is your favorite. Uh, there may be some of you who don't even like blends, and some of you who may not even like Johnny Walker. There are lots, especially lots of single malt aficionados, and uh, should I say the word snobs? Maybe not, but... Anyway, uh, all right, this is black, uh, double black, also 40%. I think I poured quite a bit more of that. Yeah, 40%. Very similar bottle design. Uh, labels are also quite similar. Just a little bit uh, of a difference there. What's missing is the number 12 on the double black. This one is a no age statement uh, blended scotch whiskey. So these are both 40%. And... Um, well, I'm not going to read the back. I didn't bring the box with me, so I'm not going to have to read that to you. But anyway, let's compare, first of all, the color. Now, I don't have my little uh, placard with me, so I'll have to use the white wall. And I'll just focus in on that one. All right. Get my hands out of the way. Let's try it like, like this. It's not easy to do. Okay. All right, now I better keep these oriented. Oops. Okay, so here we have the 12-year-old uh, on my left, that's your right, and uh, the double black on my right, which is your left. There we go, side by side. You know, to my eyes, these are identical in color. And uh, that's a pretty amazing feat unless you realize that uh, there's been a little bit of um, uh, uh, enhancement done to the color of both of these. Does that say so on the back here? Now these are Korean market releases. And in Korea, they don't have to disclose uh, the um, uh, use of caramel spirit color, E150A. No, nothing there. All it says is uh, whiskey essence 100%. They don't even list the water. Let's see here. Yep. All right, well, anyway. Okay, so we'll start with the standard black 12-year-old black label. Oh yeah, should we check out the legs? Let's check out the legs simultaneously. Let's see if I can get that swirled well. All right. Let's see which one has better legs. Well, it's actually no contest. The double black has much, much healthier, robust legs uh, than does the Johnny Walker, uh, the 12 year old. But look at that, it's just starting there. So it's a, kind of a late comer. Mm, anyway, um, so we can expect perhaps a slightly richer mouthfeel with the double black. And uh, in my 
recent uh, uh, reacclimatization of uh, these two whiskeys, what I can say is is that I quite like um, the 12 year old for its just classic, uh, classic Scotch flavor. Um, and uh, the double black, I'm surprised at how much peat content is in there. And I think it's not just peat, I think it's also a little bit of extra sherry. So there might be like a sherried um, talisker involved in the making of that. And then also what happens with the double black is the use of um, uh, heavily charred barrels, kind of like what they do for bourbon. Uh, so you'd think that they would, they, that would get a bit darker, but um, well, it may just be that this one has uh, less or no uh, color and this one has a little bit, but you know, it's hard to say. All right, anyway, on to the nose, first of all, for the 12 year old. I get hay, I get a bit of sherry, slight hint of raisin, lots of apple, but it's very grassy and there's a little bit of pepperiness and uh, a hint of peat in there that's unmistakable. And I think in my um, studies of the blends, uh, this is only second to teachers for those basic bottles. Yeah, and there's also a candy sweetness in there. What kind of candy? Like the smell of uh, the Willy Wonka bottle caps, especially the, the cola. But yeah, that bit of a uh, bit of hay and um, uh, a tiny bit of saltiness as well. And in fact, this really covers all the bases for what you call a Scotch whiskey. All right. Well, uh, should we give that a taste, or should we move into the double black? Hmm. I think we should go into the taste because this has a bit of peat, and I don't want to have my palate tarnished by that peaty content. All right. So on to the palate then. Cheers, everybody. And uh, happy holidays, if you're on holidays too. <laughs> you get lots of pepper on the palate. Pepper and caramel. Maybe a hint of those cola bottle caps coming back again. I can taste a bit of that hay on the palate as well. Not that I eat hay, but you know, if you've ever stuck a piece of uh, uh, dry hay in your mouth uh, to kind of look like a, a, a what would that be? Uh, look like a, a cowboy, then you'll know what hay tastes like. Hmm. Raisins come through on the palate as well. And that smoky, peaty content, still there, very lovely, very nicely put together. The finish is short to medium. It's a bit dry. <clears throat> Little bit of that raisin flavor, that smoky peatiness, a bit of pepper. And it just kind of trails out slowly. And there's really nothing off-putting about this. And I think what I want to say about that is that um, when you think that's a step up from the red label, it's actually quite a big step up. And uh, for, I think, not quite double the price, you're getting uh, definitely more than double of the whiskey, in my opinion. Now, I recently reviewed Red Label also. Check that out. 
uh, you can uh, scroll back a couple of reviews and find Johnny Walker, Red vs. Red, so check that out. All right, let's get on to the uh, a double black and see how that is. And first of all, we'll check out the nose. Now this actually smells just as mature. It's got a little bit more peat at the front of the nose. And actually you can smell that right from the bottle when you open it. And you know that handsome dark um, uh, smoky black glass really lends itself to uh, using less color. So hopefully that's the case. And then getting something like a strawberry jam, something uh, like a, a, a cooked red fruit. And yes, there's pepper, there's a little bit of hay also. And if this one smelled a bit like cola, this smells a little bit of licorice, which is quite nice. Uh, kind of like a licorice tea. Like, uh, for example, what's that tea called? Celestial Seasonings, Liquor Spice, I think it's called. Now, if I compare the noses, I would give the double black an extra three points for the nose. That's really, really lovely to smell with that bit of licorice and that touch of peat. Touch, extra touch of peat, I should say. However, still a very nice, well-rounded nose for the Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old. All right, on to the palette for the double black. Cheers again, everyone. It's definitely got more peat to it. There's also a light little bit of a sulfuric, kind of a heavier malt in there, which is also very, very attractive to me. And it's giving it a little bit of an extra oomph as you uh, let that sit on your palate. I get that bit of licorice spice on the palate too. And again, a little bit more of a red fruit uh, in terms of fruit flavors, rather than the apple that I get in the standard 12-year-old. Hmm. Now, when I first tried that again after a long period of time, I can't quite see that, but there's only about Oh, about uh, not even 100 milliliters left in that bottle. I had that for quite some time. And when I came back to this, my first thought was, is there a little bit of Lagavulin in this? But then I decided that no, it's not Lagavulin. What it is, is uh, some uh, sherry or, um, well, some kind of a uh, wine cask or sherry cask of a talisker, in my opinion. I think that's what's in there. Possibly Kulila, but I think it's that Talisker because it still has that peaty punch. Mm. And possibly a little bit more Oban in there. Oban? Oban, sorry. It's not Oban, Oban as I learned from Aquavite. 
Roy, love you. All right, now, how do I compare? Oh, the finish. The finish is a bit longer. It's a little bit pepperier. Not quite as dry, interestingly, because pepper and dryness usually go together. The peat is still there. And a slight hint of hmm, that, uh, uh, that heavily charred barrel gives it some, uh, just a certain kind of a, a, a stringency to it as well, which is very interesting. All right, let's compare those one more time side by side. Grassy, classy, slight bit of peat, apple, bit of raisin. Considerably more peat. That liquor spice, which is nice, and that hint of strawberry jam. In the palate. Classic all around, with puffs of that peat coming through, and actually a little hint of that sulfur. Uh, bringing up some wafts of, oh, just an interesting uh, sort of a, what do you call that? I don't know what that is, kind of a, there's a something coming through my nose as I'm, I'm drinking this, and it's quite attractive and uh, making, making you feel like you're drinking a scotch and not, say, a bourbon or Canadian whiskey. This one. Got, <clears throat> it just has more of that, that talisker oomph to it, plus that extra barreling, that uh, charred barrel, which is pre presenting itself the slightly heavier, more potent, slightly peatier and smoky of uh, an overall experience in the palate. Now that said, I was thinking earlier that I couldn't really tell much of a difference in age. This is very smooth. Has a little bit of hotness to it. So it's probably got a little bit of some younger content in there, which maybe what gives it that extra peaty kick because usually peat uh, works better um, at 10, um, sometimes even eight years old as uh, as is shown by the popularity of, say, Lagavulin 8-year-old. Um, also, you have lots of 10-year-olds coming from Isla, such as Ardbeg and Lefroig. Is there another 10-year-old? Well, Talisker also, 10-year-old, the basic bottle. All right, so uh, how about scores for these? Well, coming back to that classic black label 12 year old I have to say I'm very very impressed with this and I never really thought all that much of it in the beginning but it's really grown on me now that I recognize the pieces of the puzzle from different parts of Scotland that go into making that and how that works together plus the um, uh, the base the base of that uh, uh, grain scotch whiskey single grain scotch whiskey possibly more than one so it could actually be more than one green whiskey in there, but it's probably only one. It's really giving it a, um, just a classic background of that, that little bit of caramel, little bit of cinnamon, little bit of uh, vanilla uh, at the base. And uh, the malts, just like, like puzzle pieces, just bring other flavors in together. Anyway, so excellent. And I'm going to give that a whiskey whistle score right now. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be 85 out of 100. Yes, that's right. 85 out of 100 is the whiskey whistle whiskey score for Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old. How about the double black?
Hmm. Now, they've done a really good job of making something that is similar, hence the use of the word black, and yet different, but in a kind of in a similar way. So, peat and peatier, and a bit of sherry and uh, sherrier, <laughs> and um, uh, I think probably no, well, would there be some, there might be some um, ex-bourbon, so heavily charred casks, but um, I think this one has some finishing in uh, maybe new charred uh, American oak, so that gives it a bit of a different something. Um, Hmm. And I think what that is, is a bit of that spice, so a little bit added spice uh, to that double black. Now, as I said, it doesn't taste quite as old. So then the whiskey, what's the whiskey score for double black? What's that going to be? Well, folks, for Johnny Walker double black, the whiskey, whistle whiskey score is going to be 83 out of 100. Yes, you heard right. 83 out of 100 for Johnny Walker Double Black. Hmm. And, as I said, 85 for Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old. Now, that's my second bottle. Of course, that was a gift. But uh, really enjoyed this second coming uh, of this. So if you've had a bottle and you just were kind of like, well, mm, I don't know, I highly recommend coming back to it. And even if that's uh, getting yourself a mini, uh, uh, 50 milliliter, five, uh, what's that called? 0.5 centiliter, a uh, little mini bottle, give it a try. And if you like it, get a big bottle. And if you already like Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old, then I would also recommend that you give this a try at least once. And I think if you like the smoky content of Black Label, you'll really like the added kick in the peat, uh, the peat content here for Double Black. All right, so that's my review of Johnny Walker Black versus Black here on Whiskey Whistle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe right over here. And uh, why not check me out on Patreon, patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle, or just search for whiskey whistle in Patreon and uh, become a patron. What will happen there? And why not find me on Patreon, patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. What's Patreon? Well, it's kind of like a crowdfunding. Uh, crowd, uh, crowd, and why not find me on Patreon, patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. What's Patreon? Well, it's a crowdfunding sort of a, a what is it? Website. And why not check me out on Patreon, patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. Influence me, become a patron. What is Patreon? Well, it's a crowdfunding company that helps people, people like me, who create things like this video to keep producing things despite the limited returns, um, say through the YouTube revenue. Anyway, so check me out there. You will get, what will you get? You'll get a newsletter every month and also you'll get ad-free premier content of Whiskey Whistle with the Patreon Patron Priority Pass. Anyway, so check that out, patreon.com backslash whiskey whistle. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Take care, hope you have yourselves a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to give this video a like, and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now, and we'll see you next time.